Hi guys, it's Jill, and welcome back to the Jet Reel Podcast. We're rocking and rolling here with the episode number two. This one will actually be up on time, however, so these are fun things. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got some things I want to talk about for this week's episode, so let's just jump into it. And we're back. Welcome to episode number two, guys. I will not be doing that every time because it is inevitable that I will forget what episode number that we are on. But um, episode two, not hard to remember. We're rocking and rolling. Jet Real. It's Jet Real. You know what I'm saying? It's podcast. Jet Real podcast. Um, it is currently 11.50. Oop, can't read. 10.58 at nighttime, Monday, January the 20th. So, um, you know, the podcast goes up in a few hours and I'm just now doing it, but it's fine. It's fine. And I also decided that I would be, like, super cute and um, make a new cover for every podcast, which is likely going to end up meaning that I am just going to use the same picture but put different text over it every time. Um, So, you know, we do what we can as far as creativity goes. But, um, anywho, I have successfully completed my first week of college. (laughs) Um... For this semester, anyway. I've been in college for a few years now. Um, But, yeah, this is my final semester. So, it was my last first day of my undergrad. Um, I will be graduating in the May. In the May. Hopefully, if if I don't prove too stupid. Um, Last semester, I was a little rocky. uh, Because somebody was a little depressed. And, um... By little, I mean quite a bit, and was shirking all of her responsibilities and put only all of her effort into one class and then just didn't do anything else for the rest of the classes, and then got two Bs, which has never happened before, and also failed one because I cheated. So, (laughs) yeah, I got caught because I'm dumb, and um, yeah, that wasn't fun, and now my GPA has suffered because I had a 4.0, and now I have like a 3.6, which is fantastic, but you know what? I did it. I deserve it. That's what happens. When you are academically dishonest, my guy. Um, So, learn from my mistakes. Be good children. No cheating allowed. Um, (laughs) And, um, yeah, honestly, you know what? I'm not even going to let you get away with that one because what happened was I had a psychopharmacology test the same exact day as I had a personality test. And I was like, I've had the personality professor before. I know that his tests usually come from the notes, so I could just, like, put the notes in my desk, and, uh, then I studied, and I realized that you shouldn't cram, but I have other things to do during my daytime, and I'm not fantastic at time management. Hi, ADHD. Not great at that. Um, so I studied for, like, eight hours leading up to this, uh, psychopharmacology test, then I got up, uh, the morning prior and, uh, studied uh, for it. I got to campus. I live 30 minutes away, by the way. I got to campus at like 7.30 and studied until, uh, my 10 a.m. um, for this test and then, uh, took it and then went literally right into the personality test right after. So, um, you know, I could make excuses and say that I didn't have time to study, but I'm still able to take responsibility for my actions. That was wrong. Shouldn't have done that. However, um, I, I was a little overworked at the time, so um, this semester we have stepped it up quite a bit because um, I'm shooting for straight A's again because I um, need, to, need to resurrect that GPA a little bit um, and because uh, a girl's trying to go to grad school and an F on a transcript is not wonderful. Um, can't wait to explain that. <laughs> I'm so excited and I'll probably get rejected from all of the colleges I apply to. I can't wait. Um, but anyway... Um, Yeah, so this semester I have um, employed my OCD streak to um, use lots of planners and actually go through my syllabi and write down in my planner when things are due and actually look at it. I um, only have classes on Mondays and Wednesdays, so um, when I'm not, um, you know, carrying my backpack around everywhere, I keep my planner open on my coffee table so that I see it all the time, so I'm constantly aware of what I need to do, and I also have a separate to-do list, um, and I regularly update and cross off and then make new ones because I get angry that 
there's stuff that's scribbled out and I want it to be nice and neat so then I make a new one which kind of defeats the purpose of writing it all out anyway um but <laughs> um you know you would think I would be eco-friendly and write it on my phone but that's just not the same I don't like it and sometimes in the situations that I'm making my to-do list it is inappropriate to be on my phone say in a history of Mexico class where it might be a little bit difficult to pay attention um because oh my goodness um I don't care. It's not Mexico. It's not Mexico's fault. Um, it's also United States history. I just don't care. And I realize that there is importance in it. And I realize that we all should be educated so history does not repeat itself. And I know that there are wonderful little cool tales in there that all the history majors insist are so fun and interesting. But I just am not interested. And that is okay. Everyone has different interests. Some people don't find psychopharmacology interesting but I grew to love it um but yeah I just no not my favorite class so sometimes we um make to-do lists to um like save from the death of boredom um but anyway so far now you all know how terrible of a student I am um but on a real note I have been uh sticking to my planner and making a real effort to um be aware of everything that I have to do and stay on top of it. And, um, prior to recording this podcast, I spent three hours working on, um, a week's worth of work for one class so that I can focus on the others. Because if I didn't mention, I'm taking 18 hours this semester, which is six classes so that I can graduate. Um, since I failed that one class last semester, um, I would have only had to take 15, but you know, we, it just keeps, it's a gift that keeps on giving, that, uh, failure. Um, but I am still graduating a year early, so that is fine by me. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of reading to do, and like I said, I just spent three hours, but, um, the work that I did is not due till Friday, and it's Monday, so. But I have other classes that require a lot of effort, and so, um have just a lot of time management stuff that I've been working on. And honestly, last semester, I don't know why it was just so difficult. Like I was just drowning in all the work that I had, but I wasn't like really doing any of it, if that makes sense. I just got like super overwhelmed and behind and just felt like I couldn't keep my head above water. And, um, then over winter break, it just, it didn't really get better. I just got bored then because the town that, um, my college is in is like dead all the time there is no people are no people here and I don't like it (laughs) and so that's why I'm applying elsewhere for the master's program um but yeah I just uh train of thought where to go it crashed into the mountain of ice cream and shark boy and lava girl (laughs) I hope that some of you are not too young to know that reference well they just put it on Netflix I don't know if people still watch that. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? That, um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Oh, I I remember. Sorry. (laughs) ADHD. Um, that's something else that we discovered about Yield Gill, um, that we have had to become aware of and, uh, work on. Um, but anyway, so, um, (laughs) Hey, would you believe it if I said that I lost it again? Um, I know that I was telling... Oh, that this semester, it feels really good to, like, have a bunch to do for some reason. I don't know why. It's a bunch of mindless, stupid tasks that I don't particularly care about. Like, um, if you're a psychology person, you probably know what the MMPI is or the NEO or Big Five personality test. Um, those are 567 question and 240 question tests. And I enjoyed every moment of taking them. <laughs> and, um, like, I don't know. I was just, it feels very productive, even though it's not stuff that I'm particularly, like, excited to be doing. Um, aside the personality inventories, those are very fun. Um, but everything else, like, um, I have to read this book that's, like, 400 pages about, it's like a biography about Santa Ana of Mexico. And I think he was a cadillo. It's like a, kind of like a paid hitman, I think. I could be totally wrong. Honestly, I'm 11 pages in, (laughs) so I don't really know. I don't like the book, but 
I just, I feel like I have a lot of things to do. And I guess since I'm at the last leg of my um, undergrad, I just, I really feel productive. Like I'm, I'm finally almost there and I'm finishing strong. At least I'm, <laughs> this is week one, so we'll see. Um, but I feel like I'm, you know, trudging ahead for better or for worse. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it feels really nice to have things to do. And um, I slowly feel like I'm getting back to, um, well, not back to, but like getting to a place of like a routine again. Um, that's not totally boring to me because, um, you know, like last spring I was very caught up in a lot of, um, relationship drama and just like absolutely in a horrible mental place, but I was still like doing horse things and social media and all of that. And then over the summer is pretty much the same. And then this past fall was just like a depression session. <laughs> We're just not gonna do social media or horses or anything that I was used to doing and instead I just did a lot of um a lot of things to push myself and challenge myself and um that sort of thing and um I just got really dissociated and weird and I was like how weird is it that I'm just like sitting here rambling and not really thinking about what I'm talking about and um people listen to this that's weird um Anyway, moment of dissociation. We're good. I think that's what that is. I don't know. People talk about dissociating and I don't really have a firm grasp on what that is. I need to ask somebody more knowledgeable than I. Um, anyway, um, but I've been trying to uh, work in some time with the horses here and there. Um, I just, I don't really know what changed. Um, I don't know if uh, I was just late to the like social life happened and now we don't have time for horses but like I still want to work with my horse and enjoy her and play with her and everything like that um but I do think that one of the biggest factors too that I didn't realize and I, I don't think many people really consider this um when your horse is where you live it can get really difficult to like go out and be productive and work with them um because you're just like, I'll do it in 10 minutes, or I'll do it tomorrow, or the weather's bad, I'll just wait. Um, I live here, you know, I can do it anytime, but then you don't. And um, it was great when I first got here, but um, I think I was able to be so much more consistent all growing up, because I had scheduled time out of my day that I would drive to the barn, and I'm there, to, I'm not on my phone, I'm not doing anything, well, unless I'm like filming, um, but I'm there to work with my horse and here it's like there are so many things that I could be doing and um so I I do miss boarding for that reason um because if I would have to make time to go every day and um when I'm living here it's just it's complicated and that's not what's happening so um yeah it just it sucks um a lot because I feel very guilty about it and, um, like, I want to work with Zoe, but I am not entirely sure why I'm not. I think that it just kind of feels like a monumental task right now. And, um, because, I mean, there's the positive reinforcement aspect of it. There's the I haven't really worked with her in a while aspect of it. And if I take her out of her paddock, everybody at the farm loses their marbles. And Zoe gets really worked up and anxious. And we're going to have to you know, taken in small steps so as not to overstress her. And, um, it's very difficult not to just be like, well, back in the day, I just would have thrown her in the cross ties, tacked her up and ridden her and been like, deal with it, horse. But now it's like, I've taken the pill from the matrix and whether you agree with it or not, that is my reality. I just, I can't do that. And, um, also Zoe is a sensitive horse who, um, you know, is, it's prone to anxiety and is <laughs> like when, and I swear I am not projecting. It's like, cause I was very calm, um, the whole time I took her out. Um, but it just, um, she needs things to be done in a consistent, slow, um, low stress way. Otherwise she just kind of hits her threshold and then you've lost her. And, um, also that's not great for them. I don't want her to get ulcers or be stressed. Um, you know, to a point that's unhealthy. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a lot of mental energy and, um, 
I'm just, I'm really going to have to be diligent about um, trying to progress with her and Juno. And um, right now, I'm not riding anybody. Um, I, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, um, we have some young horses that will be leaving soon um, to go um, get broken and begin their race training. Um, And uh, that paddock is gonna free up and then it'll allow for some rearranging musical chairs, <laughs> if you will, with paddocks. And, um, then we can bring Maze up and, um, put shoes on her and start working her again. Um, and, uh, then, then I'll probably be riding more. Um, but right now she's like out in a field without shoes <laughs> and, and it's been muddy and gross and icky and we just don't have space for her. And she's, it's kind of one of those situations like my drinks on the coffee table and I can't reach. She's too far away. I can't do it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's kind of where all of that is sitting right now. And, um, honestly, my motivation for horse stuff right now is just not very high. Um, I have a lot on my plate mentally about, um, just, uh, self discovery and, um, learning more about myself and getting solidified and who I am, who I want to be. And it's a lot of, um, in my head, lots of experimentation, which means I'm not doing a lot of the things that I have been doing my whole life. Um, which doesn't leave a whole lot of time to do those things that I have been doing my whole life. Um, so in trying to do all this path of self-discovery, if you will, um, a lot of the things that I used to do are getting left behind. And, um, while I am okay, with Instagram and YouTube sort of falling off. I figured that would happen at some point. Um, I do not want, um, my passion and love of horses to fall off because that is something that I want to take with me forever. I I never want to sell Zoe and I never want to, um, come to a point where I'm like, I just, I don't want this anymore. And the thought has crossed my mind and, um, I'm, talking about this because a lot of people have said that they've had similar experiences, um, that I've just been like, man, I just wish I never started horses because then life would be so much easier. I just wouldn't have this other worry to think about all the time. I could just focus on my school and, you know, my friends and whatever else, just normal people things. But the reality is I do have horses and I love them and I, I love mine endlessly and I just, I, that's what I want. So, um, I'm not going to put so much pressure on myself this semester with, um, you know, making real strides (laughs) there because I do have a lot on my plate, but, um, I'm hoping that once the weather gets a little bit warmer, um, you know, I'll be able to, um, you know, have more fun with my horse. And, you know, this is something else. I'm so sorry if uh, you guys don't really like unstructured podcasts. I Please shoot me an email <laughs> and um, let me know your thoughts about it. Um, that email is jetrealpodcast at gmail.com. Um, quick uh, derail here. You can also send me um, topics that you would like me to talk about. Um, and I would be more than happy to do so. Um, if you have like a question or a life thing that, or a horse thing, even, um, I don't really want to do like horse problem solving here because, um, I'm not a professional and I just, I don't have all the knowledge in the world. And, um, but I mean, simple questions, I'm I'm more than happy to answer. Um, um, or just like general topics, like what's your thoughts on blah, 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 then I'll, I'll take it away. (laughs) Um, but anyway, yeah, shoot me an email, um. If you would prefer the podcast be more structured, though I will not promise that if you say so, that it will change. Um, but I am all over the place. That is the perks of having a distractible, weird brain. Um, but it's great in many ways because we cover lots of things and I can talk endlessly. I never run out of things to say. Um, the only time I think I ever run out of things to say is when I am trying to remember something I've forgotten. That's about it. Um, Or on dates with people that you just don't connect with. It's really interesting how that happens. But either that or it's it's a subconscious lack of trying or want. Because you know you don't connect. So what's the point? Anyway. um, uh, hmm. 
I want you all to know that I, for real, just had to pause and rewind and listen to what I was saying because I forgot. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, the other thing that I wanted to discuss before I just just started talking about how all over the place I am um, was that um, I realized that a huge part of what was, um, and to some degree still is, um, contributing to um, the depression that I was experiencing Um, was just my space, um, like my house. Um, I noticed that when I was depressed that it got, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that we're totally out of the woods, but, um, when it was really bad, um, my house wasn't like super gross or anything, but I just like, wasn't, um, super keeping up with having everything folded and put away neatly. And, you know, my floor scrubbed clean, which, and like, I have mentioned that I have an OCD streak. It's I'm I'm not OCD like diagnosably, but I do have tendencies, and we discuss those things in therapy at great length. <laughs> and um, but I I really thrive on having a clean, organized space. It makes me feel good, and I feel accomplished, and I feel comfortable, and like I can breathe and just relax. And it's it's so nice, and not having my space like that. And also, it's a proven thing for, like, most people. If your space, if your room is messy, it contributes to anxiety and depression. But anyway, um, uh, Jordan Peterson talks about that a lot. He's a uh, psychologist, and he's brilliant. Um, anyway, um, so I um, started just, like, cleaning everything, getting everything organized in the way that I wanted. I redecorated, moved things around, and... Um, just like feng shui, feng shui. I'm an idiot. I don't know how to pronounce things. Um, <laughs> and I uh, got my space organized in a way that um, just like felt right. And um, it's currently a bit of a mess and I need to do it again. But I, I do it at least once or twice a week where I deep clean my house, <laughs> which is probably a little more than most people. But um, I got to do what I got to do. You know, it's my space. This is the one place that I can control and have everything where I, I want it. And then I can start gaining some control over mental things and external things. Um, But anyway, it it helps you not feel like everything's spinning out of control, if I didn't already convey that. Anyway, um, so another huge thing that I've noticed was really, really making an impact on my productivity and my motivation to do things was um, how much sleep I was getting. Um, I was getting a ton of sleep. But the problem was I was going to bed at like two and not waking up until one. So I'm getting a lot of sleep, but I'm waking up way later than I used to. Like all high school, I mean, obviously everybody had to get up super early, but I was like, wake up before my alarm. I'm just up at seven. And um, for several years, you know, I mean, it was the same all summer. And my first few years in college was the same because I had to ride in the mornings like I would get up and ride before my 10 a.m. classes, come in, shower, and then drive the 30 minutes to class. So it's, it's, it was weird. And I could tell that something was really, really wrong if I'm like just not caring about anything anymore. And just like my sleep schedule got so screwed up. And in the past couple of weeks, I've really been trying to back it up, um, to where I'm going to bed, um, (laughs) which is, probably not going to happen tonight because I got to get this podcast up, but, um, uh, where I'm going to bed at least before midnight at the very latest. And then, um, if I go to bed at midnight, I wake up at eight. Um, and if I go to bed at 11, then I get up at seven and it's just nice because I can just get up and have my morning instead of like, Oh my God, it's, it's noon. I have my 1 PM class. I have to rush and get ready in 20 minutes for a 1 PM class. Like, are you for real? I just, it makes me feel like other people probably don't feel this way. In fact, I know they don't because most of my friends do not get up, um, until noon or one, but it just, it makes me feel like such a waste of space to not get up, um, <laughs> at seven, just cause I guess that's how I grew up. And I just, there's so much time in the day and there's so many things that I can get done. And I am a morning person through and through. I absolutely love the morning because everything is like tinged in blue and it just feels like cool and fresh and blah and I just I love it and it feels just so relaxing like you can do so many things so it's just nice to like get up wake up 
drink my monster. Yeah, I'm one of those people, but it's the zero sugar, zero cow ones, you know? So like, it's not that bad really. Um, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, but, and just like relax, watch a show or, you know, scroll through Instagram or Tic Tac, um, do some homework, write some emails, like just whatever I need to do. I just knock it out in the morning and then I'm much more apt to go out and play with the horses if I get up early. Whereas if I sleep until like, 10, 11, or noon, nothing is getting done. Like, I might go to Walmart, or I might just go to my classes, and that be it. And that's just not who I am, you know? And it, I didn't realize how um, impactful that was on me to just, you know, not go to sleep on time. Um, and I just let it get away from me because I would stay up studying all night uh, for my psychopharm class last semester. Or I just, like, didn't feel like going to sleep and would just be irresponsible and get on, um, you know, Instagram or Twitter or whatever and just watch videos until I, like, couldn't keep my eyes open anymore. And another thing that I kept doing was I would, like, read books until 4 a.m. Um, and so I just, like, everything I could do to stay up as late as possible <laughs> was what I was doing. Um, and... It just, it really contributed to a lack of motivation and productivity, and um, I'm kind of tired of it. So as much as I hate not being able to be awake during those hours, um, I am forcing myself to back it up. And it's kind of nice because in the mornings, um, if anybody that I am homies with is listening, um, <laughs> it's nice because you guys are all still asleep. And I don't got to deal with you. I can get all my stuff done without any distractions because I don't have anybody to talk to. I'm a huge, huge phone call person. I love talking on the phone for hours. And I will always choose that over the things that I need to do. <laughs> so um, it's really important, I think, also that, um, you know, I have those few hours to myself to like get up, go play with the horses, do some homework and whatever else and um, just get my stuff done so then I can um, enjoy my other people, you know? And um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's been really nice to like branch out and be a more social human. Obviously it comes with its cons because it's impacting the amount of time I have for other things. Um, but um, at the end of the day, humans are social creatures and we need interaction and, um, you know, you can't rely on one person for interaction. And that's what I did for a while. And it led to a lot of emotional fallout. Um, because no person is equipped to handle that kind of dependency. And I've always been a very independent person. And I don't like being that reliant on another person anyway. Um, so it's nice to just have some people that you can, you know, just be with and, everything's okay. Or you can just call them and talk to them. But you, it's not one person that you're like, oh my God, what are you doing? Why are you, why don't you like me? <laughs> and it's so ridiculous to say in hindsight, but oh, a girl got her emotions all wrapped up and all that. Um, there's just, there's so many lessons that you learn from the people in your life. I saw a quote on Instagram the other day. Yes, I'm one of those people. Please judge me because I'm judging me. Um, but it was like, um, you know, uh, everybody walks into your life for a reason. Some people are there for life and some people are there for a lesson. And I know that's not exactly how the quote went. It was much more eloquent on the nice little infographic -y thing. Um, but I think that that's really powerful too. Just, um, you know, like it's along the same lines of one of my favorite mottos is like, uh, it's not a mistake unless you, um, don't learn from it. So, you know, even if things don't go the way that you wanted or the way that you had planned or you didn't do exactly what you wanted to, if you learn something from it, it's not a mistake because that knowledge is valuable. You won't do it again. Even if that's all you learned, that you don't want to do that again, that's still powerful. Um, and being aware of that is huge also. But um, anyway, um, I think recognizing that, um, you know, people you either have love for life or a lesson for life. I think that was actually what it said. Um, is really important too, because I mean, you can always, you know, see people for value, um, that they can add to your life, not in like necessarily a self-serving selfish way. Um, but that was redundant. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just <laughs> commentating on my own speech. Um, but that, 
uh, you know, it just, it helps with appreciation. Just being like, you are here and you're here now and I'm either going to learn something from you or, you know, this could work out and everything would be great, you know? So, I mean, it's just, um, I also don't like to look back on, you know, people from the past because I have had endless friendships that just don't work out. And, um, it's to a point where I'm like, am I the problem? But I feel like I'm a very level-headed person. Like, I have my persnickety moments, but, like, I don't really ever blow up at people or anything like that. But for some reason, the people that I have been friends with in the past, <laughs> um, like, just, it just, you know, go an interesting direction. And, um, for whatever reason, we just don't fit anymore. And, um... So I haven't had a whole lot of the friendships stick around, but a lot of those people taught me a lot of different things, even if it was simply, I don't get along with this type of person or these tendencies or whatever. And um, it's just something to look out for um, in the future and uh, to create a happier life, you know, because I mean, some personalities just don't mesh for whatever reason, whether I was the problem or they were the problem is sort of irrelevant. It's rather... Um, that we just don't go together and our experiences did not make us into people that are compatible. Um, and, uh, that's more in the realm of friendships, but, um, I guess it also applies to relationships. Um, and you know, some are good, some are bad, some are awful. <laughs> um, and you know, it's just, it's really interesting to consider how much different, um, things can get really, really quickly. And, um, I don't know. I think it's just important. Um, one of the biggest themes that I've had in my therapy sessions lately is that, um, just to be in the moment and try to be present because I really like to analyze and problem solve. But when you're trying to figure out, you know, everything and all the answers to the situation, you're not really participating anymore. You're just thinking (laughs) and you, withdraw and pull yourself out of it. Um, so a lot of what I've been doing lately is just to try and be in the moment and just feel what I'm feeling, be aware of it, but not judge it or try to question it or figure out why or attach meaning, just nothing. Just, this is what I feel. Cool. And then I can analyze it later when I just absolutely can't take it anymore. Um, but yeah, I think that that is, that's really all we can do is just be like, yo, I'm going to be in the moment and try to do the best I can. And, uh, that's, that's what I've been doing here as of late, you know, just, um, focusing on my schoolwork because it, it feels really good to be productive again in something that I know is meaningful. Even if the classes aren't particularly my favorite, um, it is like, it's really nice to know that like I'm about to graduate and I've almost done it, you know? And, um, So, yeah, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to get back to working with Zoe on a semi-regular basis and um, Juno, because if you guys remember um, in the last season of this podcast, when it was still um, equine-centric, I discussed um, Juno quite a bit, and um, since that um, podcast dropped, I have not um, had so much time to be really consistent with her. And I also took like a month or two off of working with her. And then restarting was restarting, period. Like, her trust was broken and um, I had to restart from the ground up. And so, um, she's a horse that 110% needs consistency. That I am not entirely sure that I can offer, but I am doing the best I can at the moment. But I'm going to have to figure out some, some sort of schedule and get crack a lacking on all that. Um, because realistically I have Monday and Wednesday classes, but, um, then the rest of the week is just open for me. I just have to, as I'm getting my sleep schedule where I want it. And then hopefully I'll be able to, um, organize into where I can do horses in the morning and, um, then some schoolwork before class and then go to class and schoolwork after. And then on the days that I don't have class, obviously just, no, the class part. Um, you don't need my entire schedule, but I, (laughs) some people find it helpful to listen to how other people organize things, but, um, that's what I'm trying to do as of late. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much all the thoughts 
that I have for the here and now today. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, it's pretty much all today. Um, next week, maybe some more interesting things will happen. Um, but for real guys, don't, don't be afraid or shy because I am not judgy to shoot me an email. Email? <laughs> yeah, one of those, an email. <laughs> I would love food right now. I don't have any in my house. It's fine. Um, an email at jetreelpodcast at gmail.com. That's J-E-T-R-E-A-L-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. And I will be happy to take your um, topic suggestions, um, answer questions or whatever you guys would like. Um, you can spice it up a little bit and you can hear your question and my answer, you know? Um, so yeah, let's do that. And, um, I guess I will see you guys next Tuesday. Um, I do want to say also that if you would like to keep up with me on the social medias, um, Jill.Trees on Instagram, Jet Equitheory on Twitter, and, uh, do I have anything else? I don't think so. Not really anymore. Um, yeah, that's all. Oh, wait, there's a, there's a, the, 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 blah, blah, blah. there's an Instagram for this podcast, Jet Real Podcast on Instagram. So check that out. And, um, I have about had all the breath holding I can take. Cause if you can't hear in the background, one of the cats is in the litter box and oh my God, I can't breathe. It smells so bad. So I'm going to hang up and clean that immediately. Oh, and there she goes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to clean that immediately. Hang up. We're not on the phone. Jeez. Jill, pay attention to what you're doing. Um, anyway, I can't breathe. God, that's gross. Um, <laughs> so, Oh God. Okay. I'm going to end the podcast everyone before I die. Um, yeah, my nose is inside my shirt now. That is foul. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Goodbye. Okay,